possession of the Crimean Peninsula has been a source of conflict for centuries and is still today one of the main bases of the confrontation between Russia and Ukraine. Eighty years ago during World War II, this sector was hotly contested by Germany and the Soviet Union, and as we will see below, both countries clung to it and defended it even when everything was lost, leaving hundreds of thousands of soldiers surrounded and isolated. So in today's program, we are going to focus on the desperate defense that the Germans made in the Crimean Peninsula during the first months of 1944, until they were expelled from it in the month of May. Let us therefore place ourselves at the end of 1942, when Soviet pressure along the entire southern and central German front made it impossible to rescue the German troops encircled in Stalingrad, and Manstein had no choice but to initiate a withdrawal of all his units. At this time the Soviet troops were still far from penetrating the north of the Crimean Peninsula, but in its eastern sector, where the Kerch Peninsula was located, there was a greater danger. Thus, the 17th German Army of General Owen J. Necker is fixed on the Taman Peninsula, which serves as protection for Crimea. It should be noted that keeping this territory was very important to maintain the alliance with Romania and Bulgaria, because once the Soviets took Crimea, their aircraft could bomb both countries at will. The German leader had an ulterior motive by keeping Gienicker's nearly 400,000 men there, and that was to launch a future offensive from these positions. Clearly this was wishful thinking, as the German army would never again be in a position to attempt such a thing. In any case, and although the western flank of Crimea had been amply protected, the focus of the fighting was now in the vicinity of Kharkov, where Manstein was able to conclude his counteroffensive with notable success. From this point the units of the 17th Army were progressively withdrawn from Taman to reinforce the Donetsk Basin. After the failed Citadel operation, and the subsequent Soviet counteroffensive along the entire German line from the Oral Salient to the Sea of Azov, the Germans began a progressive withdrawal to the Dnieper River that was completed during the months of October and November. At this time the German forces that were both in the Crimean Peninsula and in the Taman Bridgehead, had already been isolated and had lost ground contact with the rest of the German armies. This being the critical situation, Manstein once again requested the evacuation of these troops, since his position was lost. Hitler agreed on September 3rd to definitively withdraw the remains of the 17th Army that were still in Taman, but ordered that Crimea had to be defended. During the first days of November, Kiev was reconquered by the Soviets, and there were no Germans left east of the Dnieper River. Thus, as this river flows into the Black Sea and not the Sea of Azov, some 200,000 German and Romanian soldiers were isolated within the Crimean Peninsula. Although the orders transmitted by Hitler were always to resist and maintain the position whatever the situation, in this case it has some justification due to the geostrategic importance of Crimea. In it was the city of Sevastopol and its port, which was the most important in the Soviet Union on the Black Sea, which in turn connected with the Mediterranean. As if that were not enough, and as we have indicated before, Romania was within range of the Soviet aviation to fall these last positions and its fuel plants would be exposed to said air attacks, as happened when it fell into Soviet hands. The German-Romanian troops that had remained in the Crimea could be supplied both by air and by sea, in the same way that their evacuation could only be in the same way. It was mainly the Romanian navy that took on this task. Returning now to the evolution of the combats, we have to indicate that since the beginning of 1944, the Soviets continued to launch a series of offensives that end up conquering all of what is now Ukraine, reaching the border with Romania in April. As we can see on the map, it was precisely during this month of April, when Crimea had already been quite isolated from the rest of the German positions, that the Soviets began their offensive on it. In this situation of total chaos, in which Romania itself was under attack, and the Germans were trying to evacuate a new encirclement in which 200,000 soldiers had been trapped in Podolsky. The attention that could be given to Crimea was minimal, and the supplies that reached the peninsula were increasingly scarce. The forces that the Germans had in Crimea were about 140,000 men, framed in the German 17th Army and another 60,000 Romanians. Its equipment was made up of some 3,500 cannons, 200 battle tanks and only 150 planes. 
The contingent of the Red Army assigned to the conquest of Crimea was constituted by the Four Ukrainian Front, made up of some 450,000 soldiers with 6,000 guns, 550 tanks, and 1,750 planes, which obviously gave it total air supremacy. This is tremendously important because it makes any operation of the Axis forces in their supply or rescue mission very difficult. On April 8, 1944, after about four months surrounded on the peninsula, the German-Romanian forces were finally attacked by the Red Army. The offensive was produced by two points simultaneously, the first being from the north and the second from the east by Kerch. At the same time that this was taking place, heavy attacks were also taking place on the Romanian border which continued to give ground to the Soviets. A few days after this offensive began, in which the Soviet forces also had the support of local partisans who acted jointly behind German lines, the German High Command, knowing that it was not going to be possible to sustain this offensive for long line, and knowing that what really mattered from the peninsula was the city of Sevastopol together with its port, they ordered the general withdrawal of all troops to the city of Sevastopol. His mission now was not to abandon the city, and to defend it at all costs in the same way that the Soviets had done in the first campaigns of 1941 and 1942, in which they resisted there for eight months, until it was precisely conquered by Manstein in July 1942. Thus, paradoxically, while all these attacks were taking place, Marshal von Manstein was dismissed from command of Army Group South, leaving him orphaned as leaders until his new generals became familiar with the troops and with the situation. By April 12, Sevastopol had been named a fortress city, and remained the last German territory on the Crimean Peninsula. The Romanian ships, leaving from the port of Constanta, then began a major activity to evacuate the wounded and supply the resisting troops with war equipment. The German high command at that stage rejected the massive evacuation of the encircled troops, arguing that Sevastopol could remain a fortress indefinitely, just as the Soviets had done. However, from the end of April the Soviet offensive became more intense, forcing the Germans to use all their available resources in this desperate defense. Thus, the last armored forces began a series of small local counteroffensives aimed at slowing down the enemy advance as much as possible. This tactic only slowed down the Red Army but did not stop it, and by the beginning of May the Wehrmacht 17th Army, which had been unable to receive reinforcements, was no longer able to hold most of its defensive positions, rapidly losing ground before the Red Army of General Talbijan. On May 9, the Soviets had already entered the port of Sevastopol and had destroyed the airfields that the Germans held on the outskirts of the city. The remnants of the 17th Army went into battle inside the city only to protect the evacuation of troops being withdrawn by sea. That same day the German high command was aware that the position was lost and authorized the naval evacuation by the Romanian ships, which began to evacuate as many soldiers and civilians as possible to Romania. This evacuation was really complicated due to the small number of Romanian ships, and the obvious Soviet air dominance that continually crushed these ships. This caused that thousands of German and Romanian soldiers could not be evacuated and ended up being taken prisoner. Finally, the fight for the Sevastopol fortress ended on May 12, when all the port facilities were in the hands of the Red Army. From then on, the Soviets recaptured Crimea and obtained an important air naval attack base against Army Group South, in addition to directly threatening the oil fields of Romania and its Black Sea coasts, which were effectively targeted by Soviet bombers. The German-Romanian casualties were very high, and it is estimated that between them they suffered about 100,000 dead, wounded and prisoners. Specifically, the Romanians had about 32,000 casualties and the Germans about 65,000, many of them due to the sinking of the rescue ships, in which more than 10,000 soldiers drowned. On the other hand, the Soviets had about 84,000 casualties between dead and wounded. Finally, the evacuation of Sevastopol managed to bring to Romania 36,000 Romanian soldiers, including 4,200 wounded, and 58,000 German soldiers, of whom 12,000 were wounded. In addition, along with this German-Romanian contingent, a small group of Slovak fighters and 15,000 Russians who were fighting in the service of Germany, as well as a good number of civilians, were evacuated. 
It is estimated that approximately the remaining 50,000 soldiers were captured by the Soviets. In any case, and looking at the data of the evacuated people, we see that no priority was given to their nationality or condition, rescuing Romanians, Germans, Slovaks, and even Russians who were fighting with Germany alike. Thank you all for being a part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other again here as always, next Thursday and Sunday. See you soon.